book four chapters seven through nine of the consoling thoughts of st francis de sales by jean joseph Huguet. this librivox recording is in the public domain book four consoling thoughts on eternity chapter seven on the death of a brother my dear brother for i am in the place of him whom our good god has taken to be near himself i am told that you weep continually for this truly sensible separation there is no necessity that this should be so either you weep for him or for yourself if for him why weep since our brother is in paradise where tears are unknown if for yourself is there not self-love in it i speak freely with you inasmuch as one would suppose you loved your own more than his happiness which is beyond conception and would you wish that on your account he should not be with him who gives us life motion and being us especially who acquiesce in his holy pleasure and divine will but come to see us and frequently and we shall change tears into joy remembering together that in which our good brother rejoices and which will never be taken away from him and in fine think often thus thereon and on him and you will live joyful as i desire for you with all my heart chapter eight on the death of a father o oh, my dearest daughter what can i say to you on this departure i doubt not but god has care of your heart in these occurrences and that if he wounds with one hand he applies his balm with the other he strikes and heals he kills and makes alive and so long as we can lift up our eyes and behold the celestial providence anguish cannot overwhelm us but enough my dearest daughter god and your good angel having consoled you i shall not put my hand to it your most bitter bitterness is in peace what need is there for still speaking of it in proportion as god draws to himself piece after piece the treasures which our heart had collected here below that is to say those whom we loved he draws our heart itself thither too and since i have no longer a father said st francis i shall say more freely our father who art in heaven my dearest daughter often extend your views even to heaven we are wrong if we regard our parents our friends our contentments as objects on which we can establish our hearts are we i ask you in this world on any other conditions than those of the rest of men or than those of the perpetual inconstancy in which everything has been established we must repose our intentions on the holy eternity to which we aspire o peace of the human heart nowhere to be found but in glory and on the cross of jesus christ live thus and often rejoice your heart with the confident expectation of enjoying forever a blessed and immutable immortality chapter nine how much the thought of heaven ought to console us the end of man is the clear vision and enjoyment of god which he hopes to obtain in heaven blessed then is he who employs this short mortal life to acquire an eternal good referring the transitory days here below to the day of immortality and applying all the perishable moments which remain to him to gain a holy eternity the true light of heaven will not fail to show him the secure course and to conduct him happily into the harbour of everlasting felicity the rivers flow incessantly and as the wise man says return to the sea which is the place of their nativity and is also their last resting place all their motion tends only to unite them with their original source o god says st augustine 
thou hast created my heart for thyself and never can it find repose but in thee what have i in heaven and what do i desire on earth but thee my god thou art the god of my heart and my portion for ever behold in detail a few points which we have to believe on this subject firstly there is a paradise a place of eternal glory a most perfect state in which all goods are assembled and where there is no evil a world of wonders replete with felicity incomparable in happiness infinitely surpassing every expectation the house of god and the palace of the blessed a most lovely and desirable city and so precious that all the beauties of the world put together are nothing in comparison with its excellence so that no one can conceive the infinite greatness of the abysses of its delights consider that for an eternity the fortunate souls there will enjoy the happiness of seeing god give himself all to all and hearing the eternal son say benignly to his father my father i wish that those whom thou hast given me may be eternally with me and that they may see the glory which i have had from thee before the creation of the world and turning to his dear children did i not tell you that whoever would love me would be loved by my father and that we would manifest ourselves to him then this holy company inundated with pleasure in the bosom of the divinity will sing the eternal alleluia of joy and praise to its creator secondly the soul purified from all sin entering heaven will that instant behold god himself unveiled face to face as he is contemplating by a view of true and real presence the proper divine essence and in it infinite beauties the sweet saint bernard while yet young being at chatillon sur seine on christmas night waited in the church until the commencement of the divine office as the poor child waited he fell into a light slumber during which he saw in spirit and the vision was quite clear and distinct how the son of god having espoused human nature and become a little infant in the bowels of his mother was with an humble gentleness and a celestial majesty virginally born of her sacred womb a vision which so filled his heart with jubilation that all his life he had a tender recollection of it and the thought of the mystery of the nativity of his master always brought him spiritual joy and extraordinary consolation alas if an unsubstantial vision of the temporal birth of the son of god so powerfully ravished and delighted the heart of a child what will it be when our minds gloriously illumined by the blessed light of glory will see that eternal birth by which the sun proceeds true god of true god divinely and eternally born of the father then will the soul be deified filled with god and made like to god by an eternal and immutable participation of god uniting himself to it as fire does to the iron which it penetrates communicating its light brilliancy heat and other qualities in such a manner that both seem one and the same fire as god has given us the light of reason by which we can know him as the author of nature and the light of faith by which we consider him as the source of grace so he will give us the light of glory by which we shall contemplate him as the fountain of beatitude and life eternal yet a fountain that we shall not contemplate from afar as we now do by the light of faith but a fountain that we shall see by the light of glory plunged and lost in it thirdly the soul will be happy for ever amid the nobility and variety of the citizens and inhabitants of that blessed country 
with its millions of millions of angels of cherubim of seraphim its troop of apostles of martyrs of confessors of virgins of holy women whose number is without number oh how happy is this company the least of the blessed is more beautiful to behold than the whole world what will it be to see them all they sing the sweet canticle of eternal love they ever rejoice in an unceasing gladness they interchange unspeakable contentments and they live in the consolations of a happy and indissoluble society but o oh god if sincere human friendship is so agreeable what will it be to behold the reciprocal love of the blessed certainly the hearts of the citizens of heaven will be abyssed in love through admiration of the beauty and sweetness of such a love fourthly in paradise god will give himself all to all and not in parts since he is a whole which has no parts but still he will give himself variously and with as many differences as there will be blessed guests as star differs from star in brightness so men will be different one from the other in glory in proportion as they will have been different in graces and merits and as there are probably no two men equal in charity in this world so there will probably be no two equal in glory in the next consider how delightful it must be to see that city where the great king sits on the throne of his majesty surrounded by all his blessed servants there are found the choirs of angels and the company of celestial men there are found the venerable troop of the prophets the chosen number of the apostles the victorious army of innumerable martyrs the august rank of pontiffs the sacred flock of confessors the true and perfect religious the holy women the humble widows the pure virgins the glory of every one is not equal but nevertheless they all taste one and the same pleasure for there is the reign of full and perfect charity one ray of glory one drop of the love of the blessed is of more value has more efficacy and merits more esteem than all other kinds of knowledge and love which ever could enter into the hearts of mortal men fifthly notwithstanding the variety and diversity of glory yet each blessed soul contemplating the infinite beauty of god and the abyss of infinity that remains to be seen in this same beauty feels perfectly satisfied and satiated and is content with the glory it enjoys according to the rank it holds in heaven on account of the most amiable divine providence which has so arranged every thing what a joy to be environed on all sides with incredible pleasures and as a most happy bird to fly and sing forever in the air of the divinity what a favour after a million languors pains and fatigues endured in this mortal life after endless desires for the eternal truth never fully satisfied in this world to see one's self in the haven of all tranquillity and to have at length reached the living and mighty source of the fresh waters of undying life which alone can extinguish the passions and satiate the human heart we ought always to have the eternal days in our mind and in consideration of them nothing will appear impossible did not david say because of the words of thy mouth i have walked in hard and difficult ways and what are the words of the lips of our lord if not the words of eternal life st peter had reason to say to whom o lord shall we go thou hast the words of eternal life this is that eternal life to which our lord in genesis wished to move cain when he said to him if thou do well 
shalt thou not receive recompense this is that eternal life for which the good man jacob called himself a pilgrim the days he answered king pharaoh of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty years few and evil and they are not come up to the days of the pilgrimage of my fathers i am mindful of the ancient days and i have in my thoughts the eternal years eternal life when well considered is sufficient to move the hardest hearts in the beginning during the first fervor of the order of st dominic there was a preacher named reginald who preached at bologna with incredible fruit there was in the city a learned and rich man who for fear of being converted would not attend a single sermon though others flocked in crowds at length however he ventured on st stephen's day and hearing a discourse on the words i see the heavens opened he was converted and became a religious for eternal life david inclined his will and heart to observe the commandments of god st augustine wished to retire among his religious before being made bishop st john the baptist dwelt in the desert end of book four chapter nine